back here, and I really want to thank Klaus for organizing this symposium again and inviting me back. It's an incredibly intellectually stimulating experience. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the impingement-free hip range of motion in asymptomatic females. Um, we have no pertinent disclosures to this study. So femoral acetabular impingement, as we all know, is a recognized mechanical hip disorder. And multiple morphologic variations about the hip all can result in restricted range of motion, which can cause damage to labral and articular cartilage um, and pain. And the principles of surgical treatment are fairly well established. We want to try to repair the chondrolabral junction and to establish an impingement-free range of motion and a stable joint, as we discussed this morning. So the normative data upon which we have based our treatment is old, and it's based almost entirely on physical exam data. And it suggests that the mean hip range of motion is approximately 120 degrees from various studies, with one study uh, involving a small number of patients suggesting the hip range of motion is around 104 degrees. So we sought to understand what uh, hip range of motion is in females. We received IRB approval to study 55 female volunteers. We performed supine AP, AP pelvis x-rays and supine ultrasound examination. The average age of the patient was uh, 26 years with a range of 21 to 35, and uh, BMI was 23. We looked at 110 ultrasounds. We looked at the point of labral deformation and the point of bony contact between the femoral neck and the rim of the acetabulum. And we measured the AP pelvis x-ray for rotation, tilt, crossover sign, posterior wall sign, head diameter, lateral center edge angle, tonus angle, and the AP alpha angle. We previously defined two points that we measure on ultrasound. One is impingement-free range of motion, which is the point at which labral deflection occurs upon flexing the hip in the sagittal plane. And a second point called maximum flexion, which is when the femoral neck abuts the acetabulum, which is what we would consider to be bony impingement. And we sought to answer two questions. What is the impingement-free range of motion and maximum flexion in female hips? And what plane radiographic pelvic measurements will correlate with these ultrasound measured range of motion? So these are our ultrasound results. We found that the mean impingement-free range of motion, which is until labral deflection, is 72 degrees and the mean maximum mid-sagittal flexion in the female hip is 101 degrees. And not surprisingly, there's a strong correlation between impingement-free range of motion and maximum flexion. So the greater the range of motion, the later labral deflection occurs in an arc. This is a busy slide, and it shows that among all of our radiographic measurements, we had excellent inter-observer reliability. However, we were unable to correlate any range of motion measurement with measures of acetabular morphology, which was a surprise to us. So I'd like to discuss this study briefly. First, this is the first objective radiographically measured range of motion study in females, and I think it establishes a good baseline for what we would define impingement-free range of motion and to base some of our therapies upon. Second, the results are not very dissimilar from that which Young Jo alluded to this morning. If we look at the mean range of motion in our previously published paper in males, 68 to 72 degrees, uh, maximum flexion 96 to 101 degrees, so slightly increased flexion, um, but I'm not clear on the significance of the magnitude of the increase uh, between males and females. Third, we found no radiographic uh, measurements on the AP pelvis that correlated <clears throat> with clinically ultrasound measured range of motion. And this suggests that the femoral morphology is likely the primary structural determinant of hip range of motion. And this deduction is consistent with a publication uh, last year that we uh, performed with some of our uh, anchor data looking at range of motion in dysplastic hips. And we found that the, femoral, the range of motion in dysplastic hips is primarily dependent upon the femoral morphology. So in conclusion, the female hip range of motion is much less than previously published, approximately 100 degrees, with lab labral deformation occurring at approximately 70 degrees. 
It does not seem that the common radiographic measurements of acetabular dimensions correlate or help determine clinically observed range of motion, and femoral anatomy is likely the primary determinant of hip range of motion in general. Thank you very much.